Voices Voix brings together Canadians who are concerned by efforts of the federal government to silence those who oppose its policies. We have documented over 80 such cases. Indigenous peoples have been marginalized and put under surveillance. Here's one of the cases. Well, I didn't grow up uh, wanting to be spied on by the government of Canada. And I grew up wanting to uh, be a voice for Indigenous children and for their rights for equality using peaceful and respectful mechanisms. And as part of that work, I uh, filed a human rights complaint uh, along with the Assembly of First Nations uh, against the Canadian government, suggesting that the Canadian government's provision of child welfare services to First Nations children was discriminatory. Shortly after that, through the Privacy Act, I was able to get over 2,000 pages of documents about me where it showed that the government of Canada was systematically monitoring my movements in my public and in my private life, even going as far as going on my personal Facebook page and capturing um, conversations that I was having with my friends and family about things as mundane as baking um, and sending those around to government officials in the Departments of Justice and Aboriginal Affairs. In total, when I look at the number of people involved, different people in these departments, it was over 189 folks. And I look at that as a taxpayer myself. And I think how this money could have been better used for Canadian benefit than following me around. I don't even have a parking ticket, let alone a criminal record. And yet, it seemed to me that standing up as a voice of saying that inequality is wrong for children that is the bar for making you um, subject to this type of intrusion by government peeping toms. I, I just was shock and disbelief. Like how could this possibly be true in a country like Canada? You know, we hear our governments talking about these types of things happening to other people in other countries, terrorists or people like that. And yet here I am and I have all these documents showing that my own government is monitoring what I'm doing. And that got me very deeply disturbed and afraid because you start to wonder what else are they up to. But in that same moment, you have to make a decision of what you're going to do with that fear. And I personally believe that the freedom of speech and the, freedom, the right to live in a free and democratic society and the importance of these children being treated properly is more important than being afraid. And so I refused to be quiet, and I brought it to public attention and to the attention of the Privacy Commissioner that later found that Canada's access of my Facebook page was unlawful. You know, when I used to sing the national anthem, uh, O Canada, we stand on guard for thee, I used to think it meant for freedom and equality. And I felt that we lived in a country where there was space for dissent, there was space for discourse, and the idea is that through that, discussion with government that we actually make better decisions as a country. What I've come to realize is that the government is happy for you to talk as long as it's something that they agree with. What is disturbing are the number of reports that I personally receive from people who are saying that government is uh, watching them. They're using, either doing it through bureaucrats or they're doing it through police agencies or security agencies, but they're clearly out there trying to collect information and, in my view, likely intimidate these groups into silence. And that's counter to my understanding of what Canada's international human rights commitments are and the founding values of the country. You know, I've heard some people say to me that, uh, well, if you don't have anything to hide, what's the problem, right? Um, but the bottom line is, to me, is that do we want to live in a country where the government can get at whim any bureaucrat to be prying into your personal and private affairs as a citizen, even if you're acting in lawful, peaceful, and respectful ways? Is that the type of country we want to live in? I don't want to live in that kind of society. That to me really amounts to having government peeping toms prying into the private business of us all. Something that many of our veterans actually went to war to fight against so that we wouldn't be subject to that type of intimidation and that type of uh, intrusion by the government. And so we all have to stand up for it because let's face it, if it can happen to me, a child advocate who's got their PhD, who's, uh, you know, peaceful and respectful and doesn't have a criminal record, then it can happen to anybody.